Level two. Good morning. You're listening to the Morning Crawl, the number one morning show in the sprawl. I'm your host, Dodger, joined as always by my co-host, the Ham, who I will remind you is a live pig. Let's jump right in and get your morning started and muse over the news. Today in the headlines, it was just announced that the heir to the throne, Princess Desdemona, has come of age and will be taking a suitor. No, I don't think Desdemona wants a pig as a husband, the ham. But then again, neither did my ex-wife. <laughs> With multiple suitors making their way into the city, expect backups and delays across all major routes this morning. Now let's get to the music. You're listening to The Morning Crawl here in the Sprawl with Dodger and the Ham. All right, let's get this day started. I liked it better when it was Dodger and the Cluck, but I guess it was too hard to keep training that chicken. An angsting band for tweens and tweens at heart. I think I should find my dad. Good thing I always sleep in my clothes and I'm ready to go. That's the official crest of the sprawl and the royal family. A note? It says, Dear Lily... Please come to the guard shed as soon as you can. Love, Dad. Maybe he wants me to work a shift for him again. Or maybe he forgot to put on underwear and needs me to bring him a pair. TMI. Well, there's a 50-50 chance I'll get to use the chronometer 3000 today. Here's hoping. And finally, the aforementioned grading pending review will be transferable to a more viable calculation. Which is, needless to say, a more economical contrivance for evaluation. Any questions? You're just using big words to use big words. Many questions. Hey, Dad, I got your note. What's going on? I have no idea. Due to the bank of the sprawl being burned to the ground as a result of your actions, any guardsman who does not receive an above two-star rating at the end of any given shift will lose their job. But I need my job for gambling. No, you don't need to gamble. I'll pretend I didn't just hear that. You and I both know my dad has a tendency to half-ass his way through life, Tell me why he needs to whole ass it all of a sudden and strive for anything above two stars. Why, I'm glad you asked. I've been authorized to award above average job performance with cash bonuses. You mean if we get more four star results, we'll make more money? You're as quick as your father. Before I go, here are the allotted crystals to power your tools. And with that, I'm off to tell all the other gate guards about these new rules. Well, all of them except Randy. He's been terminated. He just celebrated his 35th anniversary. Not Randy! That guy's a riot! Which is exactly what his poor judgment led to. Wish me luck. What, bro? Oh, jeez. Randy was just three payments away from paying off his new catapult. Sounds like you need to start doing your job better. More like you need to start doing my job better. Just like you wanted to. No, that's not what I wanted. No, that's not exactly what I meant. I, you don't just get to leave me here where you go bet on goblin ball games. No goblin ball match today. I received a cryptic letter this morning saying they need me on palace duty, and they specifically referenced that you need to cover for me again. 
So nobody has noticed that Lil is working the gate. Looks like you're not the only one who wants you to work the gate today. Again, not what I meant. It's not all bad news. I scored these off-brand discount crystals from my bookie Fredo as a gift for being his best client. It's usually not a good sign when your person that is hooking you up with illegal activities is like, hey, you're my best client. I'm going to kick you back something for free. Usually not a good sign. But he mentioned that they might only work some of the time. But I like those odds. May the odds be ever in your favor. Oh, Dad, you really need to talk to somebody about your gambling. I love you too, Lil. And with that, I'm off. Remember, two stars are better or we're out on our asses. No pressure. That's my girl. The Royal Writ. Malcolm, rather than repairing the dungeon, which is falling apart, leading to the escape of a serial arsonist, I'm having the jail cells painted instead. Give me a call when the fellow gets here. I expect the imminent arrival of two envoys vying for the alliance with the Sprawl. That's two envoys, not one, not three, but two. Four is right out. Take this op opportunity for cultural exchange and learn as much as you can really get them talking. The Duchess of Scarborough's award-winning feline companion Sprankles shall be arriving in its miniature royal carriage this week. As always, treat any non-human visitor, goblin, gnome, ogre with extra scrutiny. Remember, if you see something, say something by royal decree. Okay. So, we're going to... Let's do that. Um, then use those. Um, or do I want to... Uh, I feel like I want to have... Put the cheap one there and put the real one there. Alright, just like so. Alright, we're going to begin our day. Hello, ma'am. The name is Seamus McGoblin. I've been requested to do some work in the sprawl. Just have my supplies here with me. Nothing else to declare. Okay. Um. You have paint with you. Are you like an artist? Me? An artist? No, ma'am. I have a real job. I'm a painter. I paint things like walls and doors. An artist? <laughs> oh, you're giving me a laugh. Yeah, I mean, he's got his paint cans. Um, I would kind of expect him to have a little paint on him, but he seems trustworthy. You may laugh, but I'm sure that you're an artist at heart. And we are expecting a painter. I'll have to tell Mrs. McGoblin that. <laughs> She'll never believe she's been married to an artist all these years. <laughs> um. Let's. I feel like the metal detector would be like a waste because, I mean, it's going to just pick up the cans anyway. We can see the cans. Um. But maybe, maybe it might pick up something else. Yeah, let's just go ahead and do. Those are my cans of paint. 
I wasn't sure what exactly was required of me, so I just brought my personal favorites. So I could confiscate the paint, but I'm gonna let him keep his paint. Just like you can't play cards without a full deck, a painter can't do their best job without all the colors. Um, so you know, who was I supposed to call? Malcolm. We're gonna call Malcolm. Well, it's about time he showed up. Send him to my office, Toot Sweet, and I'll set him to work. No more doom and gloom down here in my office. Now it'll just be doom. What's that? Yes, I insist the horse get into the water. This is water polo after all. How do they have a horse in the dungeon? Okay, so yeah, definitely need to be admitted. Many thanks. Say, before I go, do you have a favorite color? Yes, I do. I like blue, I guess. Then I shall paint whatever it is I'm painting blue in your honor. Thank you again. You let him in to do his job. What more do you want? Right? Hear ye, hear ye. I have come to announce to the princess a proposal of marriage from my lord and master, Prince Phineas Pomp, heir to the throne of Petra. Prince Phineas, son of King Phineas and Queen Buttermilk, who was daughter of King Fangil, son of Queen Amelia, daughter of King Rupert, son of Queen Talia, daughter of King Sal- Thank you! Wow! Okay, I think I got it! Um... So, I'm supposed to do cultural exchanges, so we're going to... Prince Phineas himself will arrive in the sprawl after a ceremonial visit to the Royal Sulphur Mines of Petrard. The prince will be christening the newest of our sulfuric refineries by smashing a bottle of Petrardian fizzy over the front door. Yeah, he's just going to uh, smell amazing after that. He's going to smell like rotten eggs. Um, that sounds yeah. like it's going to be quite a party. Oh, yes, one of the grandest events of the season. I thought I might be asked to play my bugle for the occasion, uh, but the prince assured me it was much more important that I travel all the way here to announce his eventual arrival. Um. Let's see. Let's talk to him again. An alliance between the great kingdom of Petrad and the Sprawl would benefit both sides mightily. Imagine the petrol and gunpowder our sulfur mines produce, combined with the technological advancements that your power crystals provide, would create a union that would make our two kingdoms the envy of the world. Um... Has Princess Desdemona ever even met Prince Flinflon? Phineas, Prince Phineas Pomp, heir to the throne of Petrad, son of King Phineas and Queen Buttermilk, who was daughter of King. Yeah, Please yeah. stop. It's what heralds do. Um. 
Yeah, let's talk to him one more and time. And now, in celebration of the beginning of this new chapter of prosperity between the kingdoms of Petrard and the Sprawl, I shall play you an original composition of my own on the Petrardian greeting bugle. If music be the food of love, then you know what to do, and a two, and a three. Mm. Uh, yeah, we're gonna tease him on You that. are really very bad at that. You simply don't appreciate the nuance of the Petrarian greeting bugle. Hmm. No, no, it's not a French horn. French horn is the superior instrument. Uh, but he is the envoy to a dignitary, so we're gonna admit him. Onward to announce the eventual arrival of Prince Phineas Pomp, heir to the throne of Petrard and future husband to Princess Desdemona. Incidentally, I believe there is a representative of the Marvog Empire behind me seeking to make a similar offer for the hand of the princess. If you refuse her entry, I will give you much gold tonight. I will meet you at the tavern after your shift. Remember, do not let in the Marvog delegate. You admitted an admittedly annoying ambassador. Good afternoon, child. I would like to enter this bustling metropolis with the desire to purchase a hat. I have lost my previous hat and I require a replacement. Uh, let's talk to him. Why come all this way to buy a hat? Surely they have hats where you're from. They do, yes. But they do not match the standards of my previous hat. I was known well as one who adorned a hat of the highest caliber. I cannot go back. You seem like the type of guy that would wear a fancy hat. He needs a fancy hat. Not just fancy, fantastic. He reminds me of uh, Puss in Boots played by Antonio Banderas. Who also played Zorro. This old hat of yours must have been something special. The one version oh, of it was. It was the most fantastic hat you had ever seen. That is how I acquired my name. Signor Capello Fantastico. What does that mean? Mr. Fantastic Hat. That's a very fitting name. That Alas, is... it was. My good name must be restored. Your persistent inquisition has driven me to confess. The hat, she was too much. Too fantastic for one man to wear. I couldn't handle the pressure of adorning such a prestigious piece of headwear. I did not lose that fantastic hat. I threw it away. But what should have been my salvation was the greatest mistake of my life. And now, I must find a new hat of equal, if not greater worth than my previous hat. Uh, yeah. I, I can only imagine the weight that comes with wearing such a fantastic hat. Heavy is the head, as they say. Yeah, I hope he does well to find his hat. I hope you find your hat, Mr. Fantastico. I do too. Thank you, child. The next time you see me, you will say to yourself, Wow, has that guy got a fantastic new hat? I have no doubt in my mind. Right, four stars. Your interrogation led to him burying his soul to you and gave and you 
you gave the man a second chance to find the headdress of his dreams. I come with a message for Princess Desdemona of the Sprawl from Praetor Cargan of the Marvag Empire. The Praetor bid me say directly to the princess, Egtag Maia Kora Una Guahatag. Grant me access to deliver this message personally, and I shall recite the Praetor's words to the princess with honor. Hail, Praetor Gargan! Kapla! Alright. I killed 19 other mighty adversaries for the honor of delivering this message to your princess. I have brought you the head of the mightiest of these for you to inspect, as is our custom. Um, yeah, I totally trust that that's oh a Oh my god! Um, thank you for the... gift? This is how you know I am worthy to deliver the words of the Praetor to your princess. Yeah, that's kind of ick. Okay. Um... So let's... Over here we have... Who was it that had... Uh, but really, politics and stuff goes more towards Ash. The mighty empire of Marvog has sent an envoy from the Praetor. This is unfolding even more splendidly than I imagined. And what an envoy. Mmm, all that leather. I'm sorry, what did you say? I literally have not said a word. Oh, well, woo! <laughs> Please show her in and don't interfere. Leave her just the way she is. Okay. Let's talk to her one more time. The Praetor is attending the ballet tonight. Upon its completion, Praetor Cargan will make for the sprawl. Oh, so the Praetor's coming here later tonight? Not likely. In Marvog, the ballet can last days, weeks even. It continues until only one dancer survives. Ballet is one of the finest blood sports in the Marvog Empire, and the bodies of fallen ballerinas are stacked high in the main square. As is our custom. Uh, yeah, I Oh, trust. dear God. Is there a prize for, um, winning the ballet? Indeed, there is. The winner is put directly into the line of succession to rule. Praetor Cargan was one of the finest ballerinas I have ever witnessed. But eventually you're gonna run out of people. Slaughtered dozens of other would-be ballerinas with a grace and beauty that brought a tear to my eye. Uh, but she is an envoy. I know we'll make some money if we deny her, uh, but we're going to admit her because it'll it'll tick off the uh, the other herald. You have honor, little one, and shall always be a friend of the Marvag. And now to fulfill my mission to speak the Praetor's words to the princess, Kapla. Kapla. Uh, you're admittedly extremely well-armed visiting dignitary. Smart. Uh, let's rewind that, because I want to... Um... I think I'd rather interrogate her three times. I come with a message for Princess Desdemona of the Sprawl, from Praetor Cargan of the Marvag Empire. The Praetor bid me say directly to the princess, Egtag Maia Kora Una Guahatag. Grant me access to deliver this message personally, and I shall recite the Praetor's words to the princess with honor. Hail, Praetor Gargan! Kapla! I killed 19 other mighty adversaries for the honor of delivering this message to your princess. I have brought you the head of the mightiest of these for you to inspect, as is our custom. 
Uh, I'm gonna trust oh that that's... Oh my god! Um, thank you for the... gift? It's the second time I've had to but this is how you know bag. I am worthy to deliver the words of the Praetor to your princess. Alright. The Praetor is attending the ballet tonight. Upon its completion, Praetor Cargan will make for the sprawl. Oh, so the Praetor's coming here later tonight? Not likely. In Marvog, the ballet can last days, weeks even. It continues until only one dancer survives. Ballet is one of the finest blood sports in the Marvog Empire, and the bodies of fallen ballerinas are stacked high in the main square, as is our custom. Um, oh dear God! Is there a prize for um winning the ballet? Surviving? Indeed, there is. The winner is put directly into the line of succession to rule. Praetor Cargan was one of the finest ballerinas I have ever witnessed. Slaughtered dozens of other would-be ballerinas with a grace and beauty that brought a tear to my eye. Um. Sorry. What exactly was the message you had for Princess Desdemona again? Praetor Cargan crafted the message personally. A warrior poet. Hail Praetor Cargan! The message is... Ektag maya kola una guahatag. Or in your language... It is marriage which will bring our two proud nations into a state of cooperation. That is the closest translation, even though it loses some of the beauty it has in our tongue. You speak our language very well. Could you teach me something in Marvogian? It's just Marvog. Not in or rights or ease or anything like that. What would you like to learn? Um... There are many ways to say this, but most common is Quarg, which translates to, I am watching you. Quarg. Cool. All right, uh, we're still gonna admit her. You have honor, little one, and shall always be a friend of the Marvag. And now, to fulfill my mission to speak the Praetor's words to the princess, Kapla! Kapla. And I got four stars. A little linguish, you admitted the Marvel envoy and you picked up a co some cool new phrases. Whoa there, Lucy. Hello and salutations to you, most honorable guardian of the free peoples of the sprawl. I am the envoy of the gallant Sir Beverly, a knight of some minor renown, which is also me. I have received a very special invitation from Her Majesty Princess Desdemona as she turns her royal eye to finding a suitor. Uh, that doesn't necessarily If look there's like nothing else, I will be off to my official invitation ever after. Um, let's see. Let's interrogate. When word reached me that Princess Desdemona was going to be entertaining potential suitors, I knew my days of jousting and dragon slaying were behind me. I saddled up my faithful steed Lucy and rode hard across the realm. For thrice three days we rode, stopping only to aid those in distress and relieve ourselves. Now we are here to exclaim our dearest devotion to the beautiful princess. The fairest flower in a whole field of fair flowers. That is redundant. Um, I am going to... Yeah, th that horse does not look real. Something looks wrong Thrice with the horse. three days? Really, Beverly? Aye, little one. That is eight whole days and nights. No, it's not. It's nine, dum-dum. I can count. It's just thrice three is a really dumb way of saying it, Beverly. Um... 
Let's talk to him again. Have you ever met Princess Desdemona? Oh, alack a day, I have not. Tis but a glimpse of her I have yet beheld, but that image has drawn me here like a moth to a forest fire. And though it is true I have never known the caress of a lover, the thought of it fills my loins to bursting. Gross. <laughs> Steady on, Lucy. I was only speaking metaphorically. Uh, yeah, we're gonna... TMI, dude! I don't want to hear about your loins. Yeah, I agree. God, keep it in your tunic. Duly noted. Um, let's... I kind of want to find out about the horse, but I kind of want to see if interrogate him three times if he'll admit that uh, he's clearly a fake knight. All right, all right. It's true. I'm not the gallant Sir Beverly, knight of some minor renown. I'm just an envoy to plain Beverly, late night custodian of the Goblin Ball Stadium, which is actually me. I've been watching the princess launch the ceremonial first slingshot at Goblin Ball matches for years now. Our eyes locked during one such slingshotting, and she smiled. She was just looking into the crowd, dude. My heart has been hers ever since that day. Please let me in. I must see her and let her know how I feel before it is too late. Please? Um... Let me again. get this straight. You and the princess both happen to be in the same place at the same time, surrounded by thousands of other people, mind you. And in a glance, she suggested that you storm the castle and ruin her wedding? Yes! You've articulated it so beautifully! That's exactly what happened! That's like stalking. Is it, though, Beverly? Is it? Um, I half wanted to admit him just because he seems harmless. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, you're not an you're not an official envoy, so I gotta deny you. I understand. You are being controlled by powerful forces and simply following orders. But know this, there is no force more powerful than love. You have not seen the last of Beverly, late night custodian of the Goblin Ball Stadium. On, Lucy. Yeah. She followed the writ to the letter and I intuited that this third envoy was not legit. Uh, but I didn't get four stars, so let me go back and see if I can't grab the fourth star. Um, yes. Whoa there, Lucy. Hello and salutations to you, most honorable guardian of the free peoples of the sprawl. I am the envoy of the gallant Sir so, Beverly, yeah, a knight of I have received this. a very special invitation. This looks like a fake invitation anyway. If there's nothing else, I will be off to my happily. Uh, yeah. There's only a chance that this will work. Yes. Ow, ow, ow. So, horses don't speak. It's not Mr. Ed. This is not what we signed up for, Beverly. Can we get our 10 bucks now? All right, all right. I'll be honest with you. I'm not the gallant Sir Beverly, knight of some minor renown. 
I'm just an envoy to plain Beverly, late night custodian of the Goblin Ball Stadium, which is actually me. I've been watching the princess launch the ceremonial first slingshot at Goblin Ball matches for years now. Our eyes locked during one such slingshotting, and she smiled. My heart has been hers ever since that day. Also, I spent all my money on this costume, and I don't have any left to pay the horse. F this. We're out of here. You better go too, Beverly. I understand. You are being controlled by powerful forces and simply following orders. But know this. There is no force more powerful than love. Not just simply following orders. You have uh, not seen the last of Beverly, late night custodian of the Goblin Ball Stadium. On, Lucy. And stalker of the princess. Shut up, Beverly. Four stars. He wasn't a real envoy and it definitely wasn't a real horse. Masterful deduction there, guardsman. Okay. So that got us our four stars on that. Hey, kid, are you Lil? Uh, yeah, Show he's Show a bit of respect. If you see her, tell her I got a mysterious letter for her. Mysterious, you say? Fine, you've got me. Who's it from? I'm not authorized to know. Yeah. That is mysterious. Does this mysterious letter have anything to do with the one my dad Hamish got this morning? Which was surprising he was able to decode it this morning. Your dad is Hamish? What a good guy! Did you hear about Randy, though? Yeah, he got fired. Only three payments away on that catapult. Yeah, it's a real shame. Anyways, just take the note. I gotta get back to work. All right. Um, See you around, kid. Thanks. All right. Yeah, it talks about respect, and then he just calls me a kid. All right, what does the note say? A little girl, little girl, stands at a gate, making choices I can't wait. If you've got a taste of madness and wish to circumvent great sadness, come and meet me after dark. Together we make our stamp on the world. M Dungeon 7 Room 4 Boulevard D Dueler Dueler Nothing weird or creepy about that Definitely not creepy Where's that music coming from? What is happening? Traveled from afar, a simple girl who wished upon a star. Inside this castle lies my fate. Perhaps I'll even get a date. <laughs> to my old life I sing or a bar. And you are? It's Lil, and you need a good reason to be let in. But so far I'm not optimistic. Do you have any ID or anything? I assure you that my heart is true. Must this be a whole to do? Inside these walls, my destiny awaits. Just feels like if you weren't singing, we could move the plot along faster. Um, yeah, so let's interrogate. I'm just so, so thrilled to finally be here in the sprawl. The people. Culture, the food, the hundreds of dark alleyways that could just swallow a person up. <laughs> um, I have my doubts. I have to say, I'm losing patience, Lil. At first, you seemed so innocent, but still, I have a hunger driving me. The people everywhere will see my dark destiny. I will fulfill. Well, that took a dark turn. Um, let's hit up with the truth spray. I lie awake at night worried that my parents are right. 
I should have become a lawyer or a doctor, and I'll never make it in theater. Also, I've got a rap sheet as long as my arm, and I'm wanted in seven counties. So, there's that. There's blood on your clothes. Why, that was so strange! I seem to have blacked out for a moment. No matter. <laughs> if you giggle like that, then there is... something wrong with you. Um... Yeah, decoder doesn't make sense. We're gonna... scan... about enough of you. Um... Yeah. So... We're going to, uh, yeah, deny because you are a lunatic and mentally unstable. I see now that you aren't my friend. My time here is about to end. You have seen the last of me. You're the worst. Uh, please leave. Four stars. Despite the songbird's sweet serenade, you correctly identified a homicidal maniac and managed to take away her toy. Good job. And that's the end of the day. Score. All right, we got 3.67. You were paid 20 gold for the shift. So remember, three stars represents a good score in Little Guardsman. The four star result relies on superb deduction, the perfect loadout, a bit of luck, or some combination of all three things. The result screen like this will guide you toward a three star, but the four star is up to you. Uh, okay, so we're getting at least three or four. Oh uh, yeah, Chloe. All right, there we go. Alright, so we have a dungeon. Dungeon 7, room 4. Every castle needs a creepy dungeon, right? Okay, that's the lock. Ideal for prisoners who only have one arm. Uh, my thought is, is it was one that you would use for a, um, they have them that they would put them around their neck to chain them in place. Um, have you not seen a bathroom? Uh, you become horrified at the realization of what this bucket is for. Um, I'm a little bit more concerned about the spider in the corner. All right. Room four. So dungeon is this seven, the room right four. Place? It is. I mean, um, enter if you dare. Oh, you dared. Hello. Welcome to my layer of chaos. It looks like a bedroom. It is his damn bedroom. It can be two things. I'm a minimalist. So, this is the little guardsman we've been talking about. Wait, you are, right? 
Um, if I say I'm no. not actually a real guardsman, little or otherwise. Then what are you? I'm an adventurer. Wrong girl. Lieutenant Stryker, bag her up and erase her memory. No, trust me, this is the one. Good news, little girl. You're going to be working the gate for the foreseeable future. Oh, joy. What? That's not good news. Why me? I hardly have a grasp on what I'm doing, and I'm barely tall enough to see over the desk. I see. Then you're free to go. Keep it together, Mal. Listen, little girl. We have eyes and ears all over the city, but the gates have always been a blind spot for me. There's literally a CCTV camera. The point is, the safety and security of the sprawl must be preserved and protected, and you might be positioned to help maintain the balance. Do you understand our meaning? Yeah, so you're entrusting a 12-year-old with the entire defense of the city. You want me to do favors for you. Use my position at the gate to let in the people that you want in. Deny who you don't. Am I on the right track? You're at the station. What if I refuse? You can't make me do anything I don't want to do. I'm 12 years old. Damn it, you've got us there. But how about we leave it up to chance? Guess which hand is holding the colored ball and we'll forget about the whole thing. But if you guess it correctly, you agree to do our bidding no matter how nefarious or unreasonable. Sound like a deal? Do I even have a choice? No, because I don't trust you. Yes, you choose which hand. Not the brightest one, is she? Uh, his right hand. Pick his right hand, you can't go wrong when you pick right. Malcolm is left-handed, I think, so I'd pick his left hand. Um... The irony that Stryker was over here and said right, and Ash is over here and she said pick left. Um... All right. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. That was the wrong choice. What you should have chosen was my foot. Yeah, that wasn't one of the choices. But you said it would be in your hand. And what is the foot if not the hand of the leg? You lost fair and square. But... Oh, and don't worry about your father. We're each quite capable at finding ways to keep him busy, making sure you have to cover for him. Yeah, that sounds like blackmail or extortion. But... That concludes this briefing. We suggest you go back home, rest, and wake up tomorrow prepared to go to your new mundane job, which you will work at for the foreseeable future. It's called being an adult. I'm a kid. Keep an eye out for our directives in your daily guardsman writ. I trust you won't disappoint us. Goodbye. Yeah. So you're trusting us with the safety and security of the sprawl, but you're going to kind of basically encode messages into the writ designed for us that you're expecting us to be able to understand and decipher. Why did you Got turn it. off the light? She obviously knows we're still here. She wouldn't have known that if you didn't start talking. I should have brought another drink. You're literally right there. They say nothing as if they're no longer there except they are. Uh, where's the door? There it is. All right. So we can go back to the tavern. Boy, what a day. Hey, Arda, pour me a cold one, will ya? Make that two, Arda. Hey, wait a minute. You're too young to be drinking cold ones. Make hers a milk, please, Art. Can it at least be cold? 
That depends. How did work go today? Did better than a two-star rating, I can tell you that. How was... What were you doing again? The bidding of the three royal advisors. Yeah, painting the rocks white and flipping them over at night. Do you think it's normal that the big names and faces of this city are using us for their own personal and political gain? It's called me a pawn. After today, I don't know what's normal anymore. There's someone waiting for you in the back alley. Garcy blinkers, Gerby bonbons. Anyways, okay. it's just through that door over there. All right. That Malcolm is a madman, but at least he pays well. And with you working the guard shed, I'm pulling in two salaries. Your milk is on me. Oh, well, that's nice. We have extra of the daily special today. Eggs and oil and lemon. Do you and your dad want to take it? Uh, no, pass. we're not going to take it. This hat, it is not as fantastic as my previous hat. My journey, it continues. I'm sorry, Mr. Fantastico. Uh, the jukebox is still broken because I haven't fixed it. Aha! There she is, the brilliant little half-pint running the desk. I trust you refused entry to the envoy from the Marvog Empire like we talked about? If you did, I have the gold I promised you right here. Uh, yeah, no, I totally kept them out. Yep, I sure did. Kick their ass back to Marvog. <laughs> Incredible bravery in the face of a brutal murderer. Oh, you know, all in a day's work. What kind of gold are we talking about here? I have here 20 pieces of gold. Fair is fair. Take them. Yeah, 20 They is... are yours and with many thanks from Prince Phineas Pomp, heir to the throne of Petra, son of King Phineas and Queen Buttermilk, who was daughter of King... Just Got the it. gold, thank you. Oh, yes, here you are. Oh, uh, yeah, so we're gonna go at the back door. Lil, you came! Welcome to Garby Bunches and Thorium of Wonder. You're my very first customer. Um, yeah, I'll be supportive. I was actually inspired by watching you alternately help and hinder folks at the gate yesterday. And I thought, Garby, there must be an industry of enterprising individuals supporting the guards. And when I looked around, there wasn't. So I met a mage who's got a magic crystal hookup. And now I'm selling Guardsman Tool Power-Ups. If you've got the cash, I can sell you extra power crystals. Both the good kind and the cheap roll the dice and see what happens kind. As well as power-ups for all of your tools. Yeah, you think the guard shed would actually come with them being full It's stock. pricey, but the more crystals you can load into those bad boys, the better. Finally, if you need cash, you can sell me anything you might have taken off of unsuspecting suckers. Here, take a look. All right. So we can sell Fossey. Uh, severed ha head in a bag. Don't know what he's going to do with that. Um, I'm going to keep the two photos for now. George Provis printing Prigish Prince Finnis. Uh, the powerful ruler of the Margov Empire, Praetor Kargon Quapla. Uh, official merchant's license documents for one Garby Bunches issued by the Sprawl Board of Trade. So yeah, I'm going to sell him back those for $5. Uh, here are the, the blood gold bars. Um, we're going to sell those. Um, I don't want to keep the book for right now. Um, so I can get uh, two upgrades and two additional power crystals. 
Um, I think the truth spray is pretty helpful. And we will do... Um, I think the x-ray. And then we'll grab two more of those power crystals. Let's see. This cannot be safe. Lil could fall into the sewers if she could walk to that part of the screen. Uh, the smell coming from that dumpster is indescribable. All right. I believe that is all I can do for today. Um, I've already talked to everybody in here. And yeah, I think that's all I we're gonna do. I think I've done everything I need to do, but are you sure you're ready to hit the hay? Uh, yeah, I think. Quiet, you. Uh, yeah, let's hit the hay. Find out how everyone did in the aftermath. Seamus McGoblin did a commendable job painting the dungeon walls. Although humble, he really is quite skilled. He never let a drop hit the floor and he did all the edges without using tape. Really high quality work. It brought a much needed breath of life into the room where some people wait for execution. Seamus went home with his hard earned paycheck in one hand and a bouquet of flowers for his wife in the other. He put his six goblin children to bed, swept his wife off her feet and took her to their room. Their seventh child, Becky McGoblin, is due sometime in the spring. Fenton Hardcourt Mud, the Protrudian envoy, presented himself at court, which began okay until out of sheer politeness, Princess Desdemona acknowledged his bugle. He proceeded to toot his own horn, which rapidly diminished the favor he had just curried and all in attendance left with a bad taste in their mouths and a ringing in their ears. That night, lying in his bed in the chambers provided for visiting dignitaries, he felt smug that he had managed to successfully slow down the competition by bribing a guardsman. He thought to himself, maybe I missed my call as a spy, but quickly rethought it as he considered the life expectancy for a Petruvian intelligence agent. Signor Capella Fantastico entered the sprawl and began his quest for the perfect hat. He ventured to every store that sold headgear in the sprawl. Henry's hats, Linda's lids, Homer's haberdashery, the chapeau shack, mind your millinery, hats, 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 all caps, and even Yiddle's Yarmulke yurt. But none of them had the type of hat he was searching for. But rest assured, Signor Capita... Capello Fantastico will not relent until the top of his head is restored to its former glory. Mayala. After relaying Praetor Cargan's message to the princess, the Marvel envoy, envoy walked past the National Ballet of the Sprawls Repertory Company rehearsing in the park. Seeing that the ballerinas of the Sprawl were doing things completely wrong, the Marvel envoy decided to join in to teach them a thing or two, now the Sprawl's ballerinas are, are experts in first position and first degree murder. Since the envoy was distracted, the Praetor never got word if the princess received their message, but don't worry, they'll show up anyway. Sir Beverly, denied entry, the fake Sir Beverly took off his fake armor, got back on his fake horse, and went home to his real hut where he lived with his real mother and wallowed in his very real depression. Chloe. Chloe encountered a guard patrol outside the city gates and attempted to pickpocket them quietly, which she didn't do successfully on account of all the singing. In jail, it only took her five minutes to be sent to solitary confinement. 